the site of Ohalo was discovered 18 years ago when water level in the Sea of Galilee dropped in, in a dramatic way, more than three, four meters, and the site was exposed. What we found at the place is a fisher-hunter-gatherer's camp about 23,000 years old, the period of the last ice age. The site is unique on a global scale because of excellent preservation conditions. When people lived there 23,000 years ago, they were living on the shore of the lake, not far from Tiberias of today. However, at the time, there were no cities around, only camps of hunter-gatherers roaming around the landscape, and these people were also, uh, were also engaged in fishing. One season, one heavy rainy season, water level at the lake rose dramatically and the site was submerged. The people had to abandon the site and look for another place to live. This uh, event is actually like Pompeii, which was covered by volcanic ash. The site of Ohalo was covered by water and sand that sealed the remains for 23,000 years and left them almost as clean as and as new uh, as they were at the time. Because of preservation conditions, we found at the site things that were never preserved in any other site in the world. These especially are the plant remains, which include the construction of brush huts and the vegetal component of uh, the diet of those people, and we'll give some examples. Uh, the vegetal components include cereals, fruit, and wild uh, vegetables. The cereals are extremely important, as they are today, one of the main things we eat. And in the past, they were all wild, and here they gathered uh, wild barley, wild wheat, and other cereals. And we have uh, them in thousands and thousands in piles inside the brush huts and uh, around fireplaces between the brush huts. We also know what they constructed the brush huts from, uh, local trees such as oaks, uh, willow, and tamarisk, and these are actually the oldest brush huts ever found in the world. And not that these people built brush huts and other people didn't, but here, because of preservation conditions, they were found by us. Uh, and again, talking about the, the seeds and cereals that we found, in most sites from these periods, I mean, more than 99% of the sites, no seeds were preserved at all. And here we found hundreds of thousands of seeds, which are extremely important in reconstructing past diets, past climate, and past human behavior. The people of Ohalo were eating a wide variety of wild species. For example, they were hunting large animals such as this fallow deer. I'm holding a mandible of this animal, and we found many of these, as well as bones of gazelle. They were also fishing uh, in the Sea of Galilee, and we found literally millions of fish bones at the site. And they were using flints to prepare tools and to hunt these animals, to cut their meat, and so on. Another fantastic find we, we uh, discovered at the site is the cover of grass on several brush hut floors. These covers, or beddings as we call them, are the oldest ever found. They were putting bundles of, uh, of certain cereals on the floor with their stems, like tiles, covering the floor for comfort. This is the oldest example, and later it developed into simple mats, and what we know today as mattresses and mats and so forth. These were all developed from very simple coverings at the time, and the Ohalo too is the oldest example. During our excavations, which were not continuous because of different water levels at different seasons, but altogether we excavated for six seasons at the site, uh, we found one skeleton, one burial of a male who was about 40 years old when he died. He was one meter 73 tall, which is a little taller than me. And he was a little older than me when I excavated the site because I was in my 30s. This man was a, a right-handed man. His uh, right shoulder and arm were much bigger and stronger than the left ones. And probably he was an archer or a spear thrower, which used his arm many thousands of times uh, to develop such a strong arm. He 
He also had uh, certain pathologies on his chest bones, and we don't think it was cancer, though we did think it at the beginning, but after consulting several doctors, we believe he had an open wound for a long time, which probably caused his death. However, because he was a disabled person for several months or even longer, and he was still alive, buried later in a, in a respectable way, we believe that his community and friends took care of, of him uh, until he died. So we have an example of the commitment, the social commitment of people uh, living on the shore of the lake 23,000 years ago.